час не впину летить вже. So we are starting our next press briefing and this week on the 21st of November Ukraine will be commemorating the day of dignity and freedom, the first anniversary of Maidan and the UCMC is organizing special press briefings to this date. How Ukraine will be commemorating this day, will be discussing with Evgeny Mishchuk, Minister of Culture of Ukraine, Volodymyr Vitrov, Director of Ukrainian Institute of National Memory, journalist Mustafa Nayem, and Svetlana Zelishuk, civic activist. Year of Euromaidan on November 21st, and uh, our next speaker, speakers will brief us on a number of events that will be held in in the Maidan to commemorate uh, this day. I'm very much delighted to invite uh, Yevhen Nishchuk, Minister of Culture of Ukraine, Volodymyr Vyatrovich, Director of the Ukrainian Institute of National Memory, Mustafa Niyem, uh, the journalist, and Svetlana Zelishuk, civil activist and representative of the Chesna movement. Proszę was, kolega. Uh, how will we be doing it? What's better for you? Uh, maybe we will uh, first say a few words and then continue. Who will, who will start? Thank you. You know, uh, well, practically the year has passed since the events which were started, which were started because of the tragic, which started the tragic events that changed the, the course of uh, uh, the development of Ukrainian society. And that is why now it is very important for Ukrainian society to meet the day when everything started. Uh, we would like to mention, because now people are talking about one date or another date, and uh, I would like to mention, I would uh, give you the plan, the day of dignity and freedom of Ukraine according to the presidential degree and according to the initiative of the public, because start, uh, from the 21st of, on the 21st of November, first time people came to the uh, Maidan, and that was uh, uh, basically the beginning of all the events. That is how 10 years ago it all started when the activists started on the 21st uh, after the elections and on the 22nd at night the political leaders came. So we emphasize that that day should be marked uh, on the 21st of uh, November. This uh, year it is Friday. On the 22nd November, and Volodymyr Vyatrovich will tell about that, uh, on the 22nd of November this year, this is the third Saturday, and uh, traditionally we commemorate the mem uh, victims uh, of uh, Holodomor. And 22nd of uh, November will be the day of mourning of commemorating millions of our uh, citizens who were killed by hang hunger. And um, I will uh, give you what the plan is and now I would explain what is uh, uh, my understanding and Mustafa Vladim and Svetlana will also tell something. 21st of uh, November from 9 till 9.30 they will be laying the wreaths and uh, the candles uh, to the symbolic uh, monument uh, to this symbolic cross, uh, uh, the monument to the heroes of Heavenly Hundred on, uh, in the street, which is still in Stutska, but it's uh, uh, the street uh, basically 
of uh, the uh, Heavenly Hundred, then uh, there will be the photo gallery of the events of Maidan, the photo gallery of the heroes of ATO. There will be the photo exhibition of the National Guards of Ukraine from 12 to 24. Parallel to that, in the Ukrainian house, there will be several events. Just like it was uh, during Maidan, uh, and there were um, uh, events uh, in Maidan, and uh, then when we got the Ukrainian house back from Berkut in Ukrainian house, there were also certain activities happening, and people were going there to warm up. Uh, the weather will be cold, and so some people parallel to that could be in the Ukrainian house and uh, in Maidan. In the Ukrainian house, in fact, we have many uh, public initiatives, the activists of Maidan who suggest uh, certain activities, the readings or uh, presentations of photo exhibitions, books, uh, there will be the uh, exhibition of photographs and the artifacts of Maidan. Also, 12 o'clock in Maidan, or maybe closer to the evening, we'll be in contact with our Polish uh, friends. There will be the finish of the uh, marathon Warsaw uh, Kiev. Uh, and also, there will be a f an exhibition of Polish fund in Krzysztof, starting from 3 o'clock. There will be the international charity event Ukraine is myself uh, on the from 16 to 17 there will be a march from Mikhailov St Michael Square to uh, the Maidan and this will be the self defense of Maidan they will be going there till uh, uh, by by six o'clock at six the people's Vice, the people's uh, assembly will start then and they will be sending letters, uh, the library of Maidan, Maidan in books, uh, the Requiem, Heavenly Hundred. We will have an opportunity to put the schedule on the website and uh, we will indicate what will be happening when in the Ukrainian house uh, in Maidan from uh, 6 till 10 p.m. there will be the People's Assembly, Narodne Vice, and the concert. Uh, some people say very often that in Maidan uh, people are singing songs, but we would like to say, and we were thinking maybe we should do that next to Ukrainian house, but on the other hand, everything was concentrated on Maidan, and the songs which will be there and uh, the participants of the People's uh, uh, Assembly will be those who were there during Maidan, those who continue to go there during ATO, and these are the Kozak system, Maria Burma, Kataruta, Plach and many, many others. These are the songs specific songs which were selected, and with them the guys were going uh, to death. These are the songs that uh, enthused them for heroic deeds, uh, and I believe uh, this uh, society will understand that it's not an entertainment. These are not the songs, uh, uh, entertaining songs. We were f uh, basically, we will be, these will be the songs which were presented at Maidan. M Mustafa will say a few words. There will be um, the continuation of the meeting of the public, of activists, of friends. And uh, I have briefly described as to Ukrainsky, Ukrainian House, Wavilon 13 will present their films on Maidan on ATO. And uh, we will inform uh, the uh, schedule. Where can we see the schedule? Is it already on the website of the Presidential Administration of the Ministry of Culture? No, practically, I can even leave this plan, this schedule. Uh, that is uh, uh, just approximate. It's not. Um, doesn't include all uh, specific um, songs, for example, but it's uh, more or less the uh, plan. 
I think that this uh, week is going to be very important and very interesting for Ukrainians. It is true that we'll mark the 10th anniversary of uh, the Orange Revolution and the first anniversary of uh, Maidan. We know that there was a day of freedom introduced by the decree of Mr. Yushchenko. It was canceled by President Yanukovych, and we know that the day of freedom and uh, actually the day of dignity and freedom was restored. This is a good uh, combination that will allow us to mark both uh, anniversaries on one day. It's very important to remember those da dates and very important to honor them, especially in the hard times that we are now having, because those are the days that show what we are able uh, of doing and uh, that we can fight and we can win. We should not uh, forget them. It is not, uh, we should not uh, mark it with a lot of halabaloo, especially when there is a uh, war going on in Ukraine. We shall remember those people who changed the course of history. So we invite you to different events on the 22nd of uh, November. I am personally pleased that absolute majority of these events are organized with uh, by the public and the state only helps to organize uh, what the um, public uh, suggested. Uh, the epicenter of the celebration is going to be Maidan and also the Ukrainian house which uh, became one of the symbols of both the Orange Revolution and the Euromaidan. And I hope that this will be a starting point for the transformation of the Ukrainian house into the Museum of Maidan. And uh, on the 23rd of November, we will uh, honor the memory of millions of people who died because of uh, artificial famine in 1932-33. Thank you. And uh, the journalists will have uh, an opportunity to talk to Volodymyr Yatrovich during the round table on uh, Thursday. And now the floor is going to Mustafa Nayem. Good afternoon once again for me and many other people. Maidan has started on the 21st of uh, November at uh, half past 10 p.m. So I uh, invite everybody to come there during, uh, by the Monument to Independence. And I uh, call upon all the political forces to abstain from using their banners. And I hope that uh, people will gather and it will be very pleasant for me to see those people who were there at the moment and also those people who are now uh, in power as many of us uh, are now in the uh, parliament and this will of course still does not preclude us from saying that this is a public activity and uh, please everybody come there in good spirits this is not a celebration not for us not for people who will come there because maidan is still going on we are co continuing it in the parliament in the public society in the civic society we do not see still the results of maidan what we see in the country are the results of the war more than maidan and i hope that this is not going to be the last day when we will continue what we started then so please come uh, at half past 10 p.m everybody who came then uh, for thousands of hundreds of uh, Ukrainians, the Maidan has started from your post in Facebook. Will there be an invitation uh, on Facebook? Yes, there will be, and, but there are my colleagues who even re wrote this earlier than I. I. I hope that on the 21st, we together do something common joint on Facebook. 
Good afternoon, dear colleagues. We are today speaking about your Maidan as a day of memory, but I'd like also to speak about the future and about the role of Euromaidan in the international context. Let's remember that Euromaidan was a uh, beginning of the liberation movement against authoritarianism in the country. So this is the symbol and probably a uh, hope for many other countries like uh, Armenia, Belarus, Azerbaijan. So everybody in the world are now looking at the results of the Maidan as a uh, possibility for other countries to realize their right to freedom. Same, the Euromaidan is a opportunity to successfully realize the movement of European idea to the East. So from our, on our ability to realize reforms, the European idea depends that we will be able to realize. The third issue I'd like to dwell upon is that Europe Maidan is a litmus paper. Uh, it became the starting point for the construction of a new international architecture of security in the first end. So we have not yet provided such answers as Ukraine or Eastern Europe, but as the world, we still have to provide those answers, Ukraine together with the entire world. So remembering Euromaidan and celebrating the marking the anniversary of Euromaidan, we shall think about how we, together with the world, give the answers. There are two routes in Euromaidan. First is Euro, and this means that European idea should uh, lie in the realization of European reforms. So we are now have to talk about the success of the coalition of the uh, realization of uh, the reforms. But another route is Maidan, and Maidan means people, the Ukrainian public who became a real uh, heroes of this revolution of dignity. So in this context, we should talk about the accountability, transparency of the authorities and the success of a new politicum that uh, assumes responsibility for the country today. And we shall uh, remind our political leaders that everything is just starting. I have a question to Svetlana. A year ago, you were a public activist. Today, beside, apart from being a public activist, you are a young politician. How do you think uh, this year politicians should be on Maidan coming to stage and telling us what has changed over a year? And I'll start with uh, the fact that it's probably not a secret for everyone that for no one that there was a discussion when the Euromaidan started where it should be on Maidan or in the European Square. Shall there be uh, political slogans and political banners? The discussion was rather hot, heated, but we won because we all were united. I think it is very important not to divide ourselves and not to split ourselves. Uh, we shall look for the lines that unite us, not divide us. So I think that on the 21st of uh, November, the, everybody should be in Maidan. Journalists, activists, politicians, this is evident. Shall the uh, politicians uh, report? I think that uh, communication has to happen. Your Maidan has to assemble people, and of course we shall remember those people who gave up their lives, but we also should talk about prospects, about the stage we are now at, and about the ways to solve our problems. I am sure that the main heroes, the main uh, leaders should be those people on whose shoulders this Maidan has won, and it is very important to remember here the Democratic Alliance and Automaidan and uh, different volunteer companies, hundreds of people who organized the work of the Maidan were experts who talked to people, but I'm sure that everybody should be there together. Uh, once 
Any more questions? Okay. Uh, talking about politicians, one thing I would like to add. First of all, I would like to remind, when Maidan started, we were talking about uh, the, uh, that there should be no symbols, no political slogans, but not politicians. We don't want this Maidan to be reserved by any political party. We wanted people to come out so that that's their initiative, not the initiative of a slogan, a banner, or a politician, or political party. On the 21st of November, anyone may come to Maidan without putting their flag or banner higher than people. Anyone can be there. If they want to speak, they can speak. If they want to stay near the stella, they should do that. But they shouldn't be doing it, making it a state, uh, um, a state uh, event. Uh, we were talking about that uh, last year and now. And it is important. Uh, to feel this evening uh, some unity and understanding that we have very powerful external enemy. And this n that night, we would like to hear less speeches. But uh, when there was this march of millions, when the tires were burning, when the song was uh, uh, sung, uh, that uh, we want to be present there because uh, those guys, one of the parents or some parents of the heroes of Heavenly Hundred should be there. We should feel that that was not a waste of effort. We shouldn't turn it into the assembly where there will be representatives of party or authorities. We wouldn't like that to happen. I'm telling that, not as the minister, but just as a person. I want to feel the emotion that I felt almost every night, every day during Maidan. And the question to you, a person who was at Maidan, who was a participant there, and the minister who was elected by Maidan, could you tell us about your impressions? The year that has passed, what's, what are your impressions of Euromaidan? Uh, has Maidan justified uh, what it was standing for? Do we have these values in society? Unlike in 2004, when uh, uh, there was a very clear political component, there was fighting between candidates, there was a choice. Then people uh, expected something from someone, and someone did not do something, and the society was disappointed. Uh, unlike that situation, the events of 2013 and 14, and we will be commemorating the anniversary of these events. These are the events where the main motive was uh, to establish justice, to protect the citizens who are uh, in a criminal way were beaten and were eliminated. And after these events that we survived, we have no right for disappointment. Hundreds uh, were killed uh, in Maidan, and now thousands in, are killed in the East. That's the continuation. We have no right. It's not just disappointment in politician. People came with after the 30th of November, the 1st of December, people went out not because of European integration. They came out to put an end to such a behavior of authorities in any times. Why in the beginning I said that they changed the course of history in Ukraine. The authorities could be better or worse. There could be some economic things happening. But there are certain things which should never be violated. And these are human rights. That's the right of a person to think, to speak, and for that not to be put to jail, to be beaten, or to be kidnapped. That's the main motive. And we have to continue our fight. 
I would like to add uh, we will be marking 10th uh, anniversary of uh, Orange Revolution. One of the main lessons of that revolution is that Ukrainians are great uh, uh, fighters with criminal authorities. We know how to win, but we do not know how to use the fruit of our victory. That was after the victory of Orange Revolution. We did not use the fruit of that revolution. And now, when marking the um, anniversary of Euromaidan, we need to remember that's our victory and we have to use this victory. And what Svetlana said, we shouldn't give any chance to anyone to uh, separate us. I'm happy that many of my friends have become the MPs and that they work in the executive power. I'm happy that many of my friends continue to work in the civil sector and they're controlling these authorities. And I'm sure only when we manage to preserve the unity between the civil society and authorities, we can be sure that the events that took place in Maidan, we call them revolution of dignity. This will be a real revolution and will lead to revolutionary changes. See you at Maidan on the 21st of November. Our next press briefing is in a few minutes.